Just this now, so therefore, for the DD 2020 report, I'm just going back according to the report of World Bank, the trial judgment phase is still at 700 days. Of course, we know that it is much, much uh, improved now. For the, for the cost of suit based on the claim value, the attorney's fees was still attributed at 20%. Uh, wala na yan. Wala na ang attorney's fees. Wala na yung mga regalo. Anyway, so... Yung ano yun, kasi if I remember correctly, the reason why we increased it to 400, kasi dati yan ang small claims, uh, 100 nagsimula and then 200. And then it was because of uh, ito ang ease of doing business. <laughs> na ang, ang threshold in, in US dollars ba? Yeah. Nakapek sa US dollar eh. So, tinas natin ng 400. And uh, you were saying na uh, eventually tataas pa yan. So, dapat talaga ma-approve ma 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 yung aming uh, uh, expansion of the jurisdiction of the first level courts. Para yung, well, yung kasi ang plano talaga is the small claim is really to increase it to at the very least for now 1 million. So, kahit tumaas pa yung uh, threshold nila I'm sure it's going to be 1 million. Justice, what is it for NCR? No, nationwide. Uh, nationwide. 10 years. Because I think they're computing in justice at any way. GDK. And actually, doon sa ano namin, doon sa proposal namin which we submitted to Congress, Merong automatic increase every so many years in mm. jurisdiction. For I, I think the next five or ten years, parang ganun. Ito lang habisa ito. So, for now, pwede na yangat, yangat yung small claims to 1M, and then later on, as the jurisdiction of the first level court uh, courts increases, then angat din yung. Is for in that rest in that uh, aspect yeah. Yeah. compliant tayo, you know? yeah. Okay, uh, that's this on the next next slide. So overall, here are the number of short term and long term reforms that we have identified for each of the ten uh, indicators. So ito po yung ten indicators, but as you can see, there are some uh, with red shades, no? Uh, it's actually easy for okay. purple. It's just the purple <coughs> color of the horn. But uh, <coughs> so those in uh, purple or red shades, yan po yung mga my connection uh, with the with the, some reforms by the Supreme Court in the courts, no? But uh, as you could see, the two bottom, uh, the right bottom uh, indicators are the. Uh, issues that we're actually resolving right now. Resolving insolvency and enforcing contracts. So for enforcing contracts, uh, it has one short-term reform and four uh, long-term reforms while for resolving insolvency, we're, we're actually uh, proposing for four long-term reforms. So maybe let's go first with the EC, with the enforcing contracts. So um, on the enforcing contracts, the, the Case study assumption uh, is this: there are uh, two parties, of course, uh, two businesses located in Quezon City, uh, who entered into a transaction of sales of custom-made goods, which the value of transaction is three hundred sixty-two thousand six hundred seventy-seven pesos. That's for twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. So, tomas na kasi because of the GNI. Okay. So uh, now the dispute is that the buyer refuses to pay based on inadequate quality of goods. Then the seller sues the buyer for collection in the court of competent jurisdiction, which is in this case MPDC, SNCB. So, and also other remedies, the seller requests a pre-trial attachment on buyer's movable assets to secure the claim. Okay. So other remedies, the expert opinion is required to prove the quality of the goods and on the judgment, the judge decides in favor of the seller and there is no appeal. As to enforcement, public sale of buyer movable asset. Now, so 
for the enforcing con enforcing contract indicator, the trend is we're constantly lagging behind our ASEAN neighbors, besting only Lao, PBR, Cambodia, Myanmar. So we are currently at rank 152 with a score 46. Buti na lang, hindi pala kasama sa SEA Games to. Eh, yun yun. SEA Games yan, number one po tayo ngayon. But we are positive that in this next cycle, kasi nga because of the respondents, na did not reflect yung what's been happening. So we are really positive that these figures will drastically change given the implementation of the reforms that we already have with our small claims. Now, um, for the Doing Business 2020 report again, the World Bank Survey team retained our total time to resolve the dispute based on the case study, which is 900, as, uh, 962 days. Now, as you can see, service in filing, 8 days, trial judgment, 700 days, enforcement of judgment, 204. So this is based on their uh, ano daw, uh, survey. So including the attorney's fees, as you can see, court fees, enforcement judgment is 31% of the claim value. So the quality of judicial process, we scored out of uh, 18 points, we scored 7.5. Then on the next slide. So here are now, we can go to the reform initiatives for enforcing contracts. No? So, the reform uh, for monitoring is the increase of threshold for small claims from 300,000 to 400,000, which was already implemented for 2019. So actually, tapos na po yan, and uh, as long na hindi the, the GNI would be within the 400. Okay, so I think we discussed that already. Now. Um, we are looking forward to a reduced cost and shorter time for the resolution of these cases for the 2021 cycle. So based on our simulation, and assuming that the other countries do not move, from 962 days, it will now be re uh, reduced to 322. So 58 days for service and filing, 60 days for trial and judgment, and 204 days for enforcement of judgment. So we just estimated the days for trial and judgment to 60 days since we are yet to get the average resolution time for small claims cases pending with Quezon City and PTC. So for the cost, it will be uh, changed from 31 to 11 percent of the claim value, zero attorney's fees, 6 percent court fees, and 5 percent enforcement fees. Uh, the enforcement contract uh, ranks over 190 economies will be 26 from 152 with a score of 70.9 points from 46 points. I mean, so, malaki. No laughing effect. Yung 2021, sila ko mo, no? Ah, sila. 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 So, 26 from 152. So, it's it's the biggest, one of the biggest big talaga na ano. So, and the good thing here is, uh, nagawa na yung form. So, okay. So, now, there's a risk factor uh, that we have been discussing, no? Uh, we know that as of 2020 DB report, the claim value being measured by the World Bank is already at 362,000. 779. Since this is based on GNI or gross national income per capita uh, of the country of 200% of GNI, the claim value may possibly exceed 400,000 no, in the succeeding DB cycles. Question. For 2021, so magpapapunta na naman sila ng tao dito? Yes, sir. Mga taga World Bank na naman? Yes, sir. Yan ang, ang, uh, sila na ba ba ito? World Bank o tayo? World Bank, sir. Um, the the survey team would be arriving sometime. Um, the the survey was started um, in February, March. Uh, the survey, the questionnaires will be sent out around February. Then they usually come around March. Yeah. For the actual for the validation, which will take you know, around. And then it ends around May one. <coughs> May one, and then the results will so come out around. So we should be expecting a meeting with them yes. sometime yes. March. Okay. So this will be just 
Okay. So what are you? Okay. So if okay, so if this reform alone, itong ano lang po, reform on uh, what we could control right now, not this discarding all of the other uh, sub indicators, ito lang sa enforcing contracts na. Um, <clears throat> If it would be accepted by World Bank, it would increase the overall ranking of the Philippines to 91 from 95. So, can improve the EODB score from 60, 65.3 from 62.8. So, it would be the highest rank already in the Philippines so far in the doing business, in the doing business report. So, again, the assumption is, hindi mo gumalaw yung mga kapit-bahay natin, yung ibang mga 